Hi, my name's Tracy Chapman, and I'm a local folk musician. I've been playing in the Boston acoustic music scene for the past four years now. And uh, I've been playing music since I was 12, or writing songs and playing guitar since 12. But um, I've always been involved with music. I've always been uh, singing, and uh, I played the organ before I, I played guitar and wrote poetry before I started writing songs and first performed publicly when I was in high school. Uh, we had coffee houses and uh, I used to organize the coffee houses and I also usually ended up playing at them because we could never <laughs> find other people to play. <laughs> so I got a lot of exposure doing that and also playing in uh, chapel services. I guess my mother influenced me a lot. She's very musical and she would sing in uh, in church, and she also sang in a, a band, uh, singing in, in nightclubs, doing popular tunes of the day. Mm -hmm. we, my mother bought this uh, cheap little like $40 organ because she wanted my sister and I to learn how to play uh, uh, religious songs. And uh, I just, I grew out of that and uh, I found the guitar a lot more interesting and more challenging. Uh, the first time, I played in this area as at school. I, uh, Tufts University has the coffee houses and that's where I went to school for the past four years. And uh, I started playing at uh, coffee houses that were sponsored by the Women's Center and various political groups and um, talent shows. So uh, then I, I branched out and I started playing at the Nameless Coffee House in Harvard Square. So that's that, those were my first uh, public dates in this area. <laughs> uh, being a student and, uh, and, and performing was almost impossible. It, uh, the two things just never really seemed to coincide as far as the time because I was always out really late uh, doing my music and then I had all this work to do. and. And my major uh, didn't really relate to what I was doing as far as my music went. So it was difficult, but it was also, it was really challenging. And it gave me, uh, uh, there's always something to look forward to once I was finished with all my work to do, you know, go and play for the weekend, take my friends with me. <laughs> all the songs I write, I write from personal experience or from the experiences of other people that have touched my life. I, I guess I have a tendency to, to approach a song either from intellectual or emotional standpoint. And so a lot of my songs, or if you categorize topics, um, I have political songs and I have love songs. And then I have songs that are simply about people's lives, you know, everyday things that people go through and work. Um, dealing with growing up, things of that sort. Or sometimes I, uh, a, a melody will strike me, or part of a melody, and I'll start with that. Sometimes I'll uh, read something or overhear a conversation, or uh, not that I eavesdrop, but <laughs> 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 or, um, a thought will come to me, and, and I'll start from there with uh, some lyric idea. And uh, then the song, it pretty much seems like it goes together once I've, I've come up with a melody for the lyrics or uh, lyrics for a melody. And uh, then it can take me any amount of time to finish it from half an hour to months to years. <laughs> I wrote the song talking about a revolution when I was uh, 16. And that was... Um, I guess that was this my second or my first year at boarding school, and uh, I'd managed to. Um, I grew up in Cleveland and went to public school there, and then I received a scholarship to go to boarding school, and it was a really difficult transition for me, being in Danbury, Connecticut. I, I found that people at the school really didn't have a sense of where the scholarship students like myself, where we'd come from. And they also really didn't have much interest. And uh, I was really angry about that. And and that's that's where the song talking about a re revolution came from. And 
mainly that a lot of them thought that well they just didn't think that people's lives who uh, people who didn't have money or who were working class their lives weren't very significant and that they also somehow couldn't make a change but uh, I I feel that that's where the where changes come from because that's where people are in most need and most troubled.